Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here aboard good old Athena. I am back after having spent two amazing weeks with my fiance Ava in Los Angeles. I am pretty jet lagged and of course missing Ava something fierce. At least the jet lag is going to be better in about a week. Despite the aforementioned pesky jet lag, I am very excited to getting back to working on Athena. The big push of the summer 2019 is just around the corner. As soon as it's warm enough for me to start working with epoxy, and as soon as I've confirmed with the yard that they're not going to be moving Athena around a lot, then I can tear out the interior here in the saloon so that I can get to the structural members underneath the cabin sole. That's these bad boys hiding down here. I'll link in another video where I talk a little bit about what's wrong with them. The short version is that the core inside those structural members is not doing that well. It's plywood and it's wet. Now to put a lot of time and effort into an interior refit here aboard Athena without taking that issue into consideration would be kind of like slapping lipstick on a pig. And I want to do everything I can to make sure that Ava and I don't have to go through any major surgery here aboard Athena after we've moved aboard. Also add to that the fact that there are some modifications we would like to make to the layout here aboard Athena. For instance, we would like to move this bulkhead over here about two feet further aft, move the chart table out of the aft cabin into the main saloon, and then we also want to enlarge the head that's behind this bulkhead. All of those things taken into consideration, it makes a lot of sense to deal with those structural members now, once and for all. I've had two guys that are a lot smarter than I am offer to help me figure out what to do about those structural members. I'm still waiting to hear back from the first one of those two guys. The second guy asked to remain anonymous, but he's made this awesome report. I am nowhere near qualified to talk about the stuff that's in this report, but what he did was he had me grab some measurements and then he used those measurements to model Athena. And he then used that model to look at stress concentrations and deformation. This shows the deformation in the hull with the core intact, and then over here is the deformation in the hull with the core completely rotted away. He then did the same thing for the stress concentrations. Now, like I said, I am not qualified to talk about the stuff that's in this report, but we can go ahead and skip forward to the uh, conclusion. Over here is the structure with the core intact, and then over here is the structure with the core completely rotted away, but with added laminate laid up on top of the structural members. What he's done over here is he's doubled the laminate thickness. He's gone from three millimeters to six millimeters. And this is basically as good as with the core intact. I say basically because he's added this little note down here that says just a little bit more thickness in some areas to achieve the same stress levels as in the original design. See these red blobs here. If we look over here, they are either smaller or not present at all. So yeah, just a little bit more laminate in those areas. To sum up, what this spiffy report is telling me is that if I double the laminate thickness from three to six millimeters, well then it shouldn't matter if the core disintegrates. What I think I'm going to do is I'll add six millimeters of laminate on top of the existing three millimeters for a total of nine millimeters of laminate. That should give me a good safety margin. I'm still waiting to hear back from the second structural engineer, but that's okay because I'm also waiting for the weather to get just a tiny bit warmer. I'm sure some of you are going to be uneasy about the fact that I'm leaving the wet plywood in place, but to be honest, I don't think it matters, not even the tiniest bit. Let's say that the plywood that's in there has been wet for 20 out of Athena's 30 years on this planet. I think that's a very reasonable assumption. There was no additional concentration of osmosis blisters around the structural members, and there was no kind of visible difference in the laminate at all. So yeah, I think that's going to be perfectly fine. While I wait for the weather to improve, there's plenty of other stuff I can do. For instance, I need to order some new chain plates. Now, it's been about a year and a half since I removed these, so I can't really remember how many of each of these I need. So let's just see if we can figure out this puzzle. I mean, this guy looks to be a good match for the holes in here. And also in here. Now, there are really only two types of chain plates here about Athena. There is this one, which is basically the same as this one. And then there is a slightly shorter version. All I need to figure out is how many do I need of the shorter version? So where is this used? 
Nope. Nope. Uh, ah, it looks like this shorter version is only used one place and that's in here because of this shelf. So I need one of these and seven of the slightly longer version. We haven't fully agreed on what to do about the layout in the forward cabin yet. So uh, yeah, while I could go ahead and order the slightly longer version for that too, because I am gonna replace all of the knees. Well, let's just stick with the original sizes for now. With the chain plate situation figured out, let's go ahead and head up to the workshop to see what's going on up there. Well, it seems like everything looks more or less like I left it. I picked up Jökull yesterday and he seemed very happy to see me. And he also seemed very happy to see his buddy Skipper again. While I was in the US, this exciting looking package showed up. This should be the new window frames for the Dodger, but uh, we'll get back to this a little later in the video. I've also picked up the foam I need for the core in the new rudder. This is PVC foam sheets and they're roughly 10 millimeters thick. These should be flexible enough that I should be able to get them to conform to the shape of the rudder, but uh, we'll find out tomorrow. PVC foam is very commonly used for composite constructions in a marine environment. If you've got a cord deck, there's a good chance it's PVC foam or maybe balsa or plywood, but most of Athena's new deck is PVC foam. I'll go a little bit more into why I chose sheets of PVC foam over some of the alternatives, either a little bit later in this video or maybe in next weekend's video. But uh, let's take a look at the shell for the new rudder. I made this a few weeks back using vacuum infusion, but before I can go ahead and start laying up foam in the inside of this, I do need to trim these edges here. I figured the easiest way of doing that is simply just to pop the shell back in the mold. I'll use a thin piece of metal, in this case a trowel, to protect the mold. And then it should just be a matter of removing this bit. Good morning, guys. It is a beautiful Saturday morning. It's 5.52. Blessed be thou jet lag. I've been up since 4 a.m. Anywho, so yesterday I trimmed the rudder shell and this should now be a perfect match. So that's awesome. What's not so awesome is the tiny little mistake I discovered. See this little hump here? What I'm talking about is this rounded shape right here. Here. That is actually a piece of metal that is welded to the rudder stock. This actually sat on the outside of the old rudder, so of course this shouldn't have been a part of the female mold, but I forgot to fill in that hole and now it's a part of the shell. It's not a super big deal. Yesterday I laid up a little bit of glass here inside of the shell. I laid up that by hand, which felt kind of wrong in my super nice vacuum infused part here. But the important thing is that now I can just go ahead and grind away my little mistake. What I've done here is I've added roughly six millimeters of laminate to the inside of the shell. And that means I should now simply just be able to grind away my little mistake here. This is a little bit annoying to be honest because it's a stupid mistake to make. And also it's gonna make laying the foam here inside the shell a little bit more cumbersome, but uh, we'll be okay. The alternative was to scrap the entire shell and I did not wanna do that. God dang fiddlesticks. I didn't lay up enough glass last night. If I grind away all of the excess fiberglass out here, then the hole for the rudder stuck here is gonna be a very odd shape. So I'm gonna have to lay up some more glass in here. The surface in here is now fully prepped for some more glass. Now, what I could do is I could go ahead and lay up that glass and then I could wait for the epoxy to gel and then I could start fitting the foam. 
Now I don't know if that's going to turn into a goopy mess. So uh, let's just get the glass in here and uh, we'll see what ends up happening today. Because of the shape of the shell for the rudder, I am going to wet out all of the glass on this piece of plastic first. It's just easier to do it that way. This should be plenty of glass, but uh, to be honest, that little mistake has thrown a big wrench into my plans for this weekend. I was planning on getting all of the foam core into this rudder shell and getting it all done. But um, yeah, at least this weekend around, I can blame the jet lag. And it's not like I don't have other stuff I could be working on. Like for instance, Athena's fiberglass dodger. But uh, let's just start by opening up this guy. Well, this is certainly very well freaking packaged. Uh, Ta-da! The new aluminum window frames for the fiberglass Dodger. A few months ago, Cement Boat Guy and I spent a bit of time designing some stainless steel window frames for the Dodger. They had rounded corners and they looked super nice, but they turned out to be roughly three times the cost of the aluminum frames. So yeah, aluminum it is. As you can see, these are not anodized yet. And there's a good reason for that. And that reason is called Brexit. I purchased these in the UK and these are identical to the original frames, which is nice because that means I can go ahead and reuse the old glass. Now, even though I ordered these about a month before Brexit, the manufacturer couldn't squeeze in my order if I was to have these anodized. I couldn't find these aluminum profiles anywhere outside of the UK. So I figured I would just order them without having them anodized and then take care of that over here. Before I have these anodized, let's just make absolutely sure they fit. The manufacturer of these frames have the original drawings for the Warrior 38, so hopefully these will all fit. Ta-da! Feast your eyes on this. She is looking pretty dang spiffy. The new frames are a perfect fit. And even some of the old holes still line up. So, yep, I'd say the frames are ready to go out and get anodized. The frames are all wrapped up and Monday I'm going to figure out where to get these anodized and hopefully I'll have them back in a couple of weeks. Having seen the new spiffy frames on the Dodger, I am very excited to finish this thing. Now, a couple of weeks before leaving for the US, I managed to get the first coat of primer on here. The plan was to use this first coat of primer as kind of a guide coat, and that was a good plan because I've found a bunch of little pinholes and some other imperfections. Like for instance right here. I don't know how I missed this before applying primer, but I found it and that's good, so now I can just go ahead and fare this. Also there's a giant pinhole right over here. Down here there is another area where I completely forgot to apply fairing compound, and this requires just a little bit more sanding. The last of the areas where I forgot to apply fairing compound is right here. It's a lot easier to spot with the primer on here. I also want to flip the dodger around so that I can easily sand this area in here and get that primed too. But other than that, she's looking pretty good.
just like that, the inside of the Dodger is ready for top coat. The 30 second time lapse you just saw covered about four hours worth of work. A big chunk of that was spent dealing with a gift from one of the previous owners, a little bit of silicon. Silicone that was used for securing the wiring for the speaker that used to be right there. I removed the bulk of the silicon using a Stanley knife and then I used this multi-solve stuff here which claims it's able to dissolve silicon. I guess time will tell if that is true because if this stuff doesn't work, well, then the paint job will fail. I'm going to leave the Dodger sitting like this for the next, let's say, six hours, just to make sure I don't mess up the primer. But let's go ahead and take a look at the rudder shell. It's been about six or seven hours since I laid up this bit of fiberglass here using the fast hardener from West System. And uh, I'd say that is pretty solid. It's definitely not fully cured yet, but I think this is good enough that I can go ahead and sand it and start laying up some foam. I don't know if it's because of the heat generated or what's going on, but when I used my Makita 9031 on this small section here, it didn't work out great. So uh, yeah, I'm stuck sanding this by hand. Oh my god, the fiddlestickness is strong with this one. It looks like I need even more glass over here. Right now, if I remove my mistake out here, it looks like I've got about a millimeter or maybe two. Yeah, let's lay up a little bit more glass. This god dang better well be enough glass. I mean, I've got a ton on there. I'm not proud of this. Uh, it feels kind of rotten to have to make a fix like this on a really nice part like that. Once the rudder is put together, I mean, it shouldn't really matter. It's more the principle of it. I'm gonna take Yerkul for a walk and leave this alone to fully cure, but I'll see you guys more than likely way, way, way too early tomorrow morning. Good morning, guys. Guess who didn't wake up until 6 a.m. this morning? Yep, I guess that Pesky jet lag is slowly starting to get better. The very first thing that popped into my head this morning when I woke up was how much I miss Ava, and then a burning desire to test fit the rudder stock. So let's go ahead and get this trimmed. It finally looks like there is enough glass here for me to go ahead and remove my little mistake here. And that will still leave <laughs> about eight millimeters of glass. So that should be a plenty. Oh my God, I'd forgotten how heavy this thing is, but at least it looks like it's a pretty good fit. Right now, this is sitting on top of my little mistake here. So really, that metal thing should be about six millimeters further down, sitting flush on the top of the rudder here. But that would also move this down six millimeters. It looks like I've got about five millimeters of room over here, but this is gonna need a little bit of trimming, I think. It looks like I need to take off just a tiny bit more in here. It's a little bit difficult to see where I need to trim this, but using a piece of the peel ply, I can just sort of feel my way around and find out where the rudder stuck is touching. So for instance, right down there. Finally, after a not unsubstantial amount of fiddling around, this is now a nice, snug fit. It is kind of weird that this thing is buried within the rudder. I would think it would make more sense to have this be on the outside of the rudder, so where the rudder attaches to the skag would be pushing on this. But I guess this design held up for 30 years, so who am I to question that? It would be nice to keep water out of the rudder for as long as possible. I mean, at some point it is gonna get in there. That's just the nature of the beast. But I guess I could seal up around this flange up here with some kind of sealant, maybe some 5200. I could do the same down here. I've got this nice big flange, but then over here, there's not really anything for me to 
seal up against. I'm going to use West Systems 404 to bond the uh, rudder stuck to the foam. This is the stuff West System recommends for bonding to metal. And I guess down here I could just have a big blob of that, or I could lay up another piece of laminate, say maybe eight millimeters thick or something, so that I have something to seal up against. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Although this fix up here takes a little bit of the spiffiness of the vacuum infusion process away, I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. I mean, it's gonna be really annoying to lay up the foam in here, but other than that, this should be perfectly okay. Speaking of the foam core for the rudder, let me just touch very briefly on the PVC sheets I picked up. These were recommended to me by HF Industry and Marine here in Denmark, and I think they're a good choice. Originally, I wanted to use some kind of expanding foam to fill the rudder. Because of the shape of the rudder, I figured that would be the easiest thing to do. Pour that stuff in there, let it foam up and cure, and then remove the excess with a router. I looked at foaming epoxies, because those are pretty spiffy for something like this, but it turns out those are also horrendously expensive. For just filling this rudder, I'm looking at way over $2,000, and that's figuring absolutely no waste. And the other thing about foaming epoxies is that they're very difficult to control, so I'm sure that would drive the cost up even higher. There are other choices when it comes to expanding foams, like for instance polyurethane. That would be a lot cheaper, but from what I've read online, that is a horrible choice for something like a rudder. So at that point, I kind of moved away from the expanding foams. After that decision, I was looking at sheets of foam. And when it comes to sheets of foam, there are kind of two choices there. You can either get grid scorn foam, which is what I used on the deck, which is just foam that's cut into a lot of little squares that's then held together by a net, or you can get solid sheets of foam. Now the original suggestion from HF Industry and Marine was to go with sheets of foam that were a lot thicker than this, and then shape that to match the shape of the rudder here, and then adhere that in place with some 406. Then one of the H&F guys suggested I use thinner sheets of foam that I could lay down with plenty of 406, pop some weight on top of them, and they should conform to the shape of the rudder. I'm excited to hear what you guys think of this idea. Now, if one of you have a far superior suggestion to using this foam, well, then there is still time, and I can always use this for stuff in the interior refit of Board Athena. So, uh, yeah, please go ahead and leave a comment down below if you've got an opinion about the suggested process here. I'm gonna spend the rest of today taking care of the last few imperfections here on the Dodger. There's not gonna be a lot to look at, and I think in the recent videos we've had a lot of fairing and sanding, so I think I'm gonna take care of that off camera. I've had a peek at the long-term weather forecast, and it looks like maybe after next weekend I can go ahead and get started on the repair on the structural member support Athena. That would be awesome, and I would love to have that repair completely done by the end of May, because that's when Ava flies out, and when she's here it would be awesome to sort of muck up the new layout aboard Athena so that we could use some cardboard, some plywood, just to figure everything out. I guess next weekend we're gonna get back to the foam in the rudder. I've picked up everything I need to remake the second shell for the rudder after my little vacuum infusion fiasco. So hopefully I can take care of that off camera during the week. So maybe next weekend we can get the two halves of the rudder sort of merged together. That would be pretty cool, but uh, we'll see. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.